Frankie, it's the 4th of July. We're back again to try some more Mix and Max with our friends today on Box Mac. That's what I call a close encounter. You can be my wingman anytime. Man, you never been faster than I read your book. Free thinking to speak. John, I'm excited about these Max today. We've got uh, a couple of guests that have never been on the 4th of July yes, show before. Very Ashley, exciting. of course, is known for her homemade Max. Yes. She, not to be outdone, brought two. That's amazing. Anchor Kirby never participated before in a Mac Fest. No, We're going to see what he brought to the table. And Boring Chuck, a, yeah. a new addition. New to addition to the team. We got to look at this dress because this dress <laughs> is amazing, right? Look, look at this. It looks like a noodle. It does look like a noodle. This is the most purpose-built dress for Box Mac <laughs> I've ever seen. According to Ashley, the manufacturer did not mean for it to be mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's a LuLaRoe dress. Yep. LuLaRoe is kind of like the uh, Tupperware party of women's clothing. And this was in a LuLaRoe fail group because nobody wanted to buy it because it looked like boxed mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the noodles look like little tenderoni. It's got the cheese color. It's got the craft color. It, I just love it. You have something to prove today. I do. I had probably the worst mac last time around. It tastes like hot dogs. It actually tastes like more hot dog than cheese. You're right. I tried to use that vacuum thing, as you remember. It ended up making the noodles into total goo. There was too much hot dog flavor. So I'm back again with something new to try to redeem myself. Whoosh. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's already a disaster. It's not, it's already I, I wouldn't a say a disaster. What we've got here, Frankie, a Cracker Barrel base, shop cheddar. The theme of my Mac, is things that they were gonna throw out at work lunches this past week. <laughs> On Friday, we had fajita day at work. We had fajitas in meetings. And left over from that fajita day was grilled chicken breast, uh, spinach salad, also a lot of sour cream and cheese. So this Mac has the Cracker Barrel base. Yeah, and then it's ruined by like an assortment of misc. Yes, but I think it'll work. A lot of sour cream in it to add a rich creaminess. Got some extra cheese as well. Uh, got some spinach in it to add a little bit of vegetable and grilled chicken breast. I don't know about this. Well, it's interesting. It's certainly, um, the chicken's good, the spinach is good. It's not bad. And it kept okay. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty good. Thank you, um, Chuck. Not a high bar there. <laughs> um, Ashley? Um, I actually really like chicken in mac and cheese, so I'm, I'm really feeling this. And the spinach just adds a little bit of, I can pretend this is healthy. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't like the tank from the sour cream so much. And as much as chicken is delicious, I think that's just more of chicken's fault than the thing. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't Look, hate me. you don't have to <laughs> like the Max. I'm pretty happy with it. On to, On to Ashley's. Now, here's the thing about Ashley. She prepped two mix-in Max today. Mm -hmm. Sort of like in that way where like uh, Frozen gets nominated for two songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My go-to mix-ins for Mac are bacon and mushroom, which if you remember, that's what yep. I did uh, on the episode that I was, was on. That was a great Mac. So mm -hmm. bacon, obviously, because bacon is amazing. It makes everything better. Yep. Uh, white cheddar sauce base, and then bits of apple, because apple and cheddar are delicious together. They are. I um, love them. I've never had them in a, in a Mac or even a cooked dish before. Mm -hmm. I have definitely had them kind of just served, you know, fresh and raw. I think it's a high risk maneuver. I don't think so. I think you got to think more gourmet, Frankie. Also, smoked gouda in smoked the cheese. Gouda. Yep. I love White smoked gouda. White cheddar and smoked gouda. But now we've got apples in there. This. Thank God she left out the breadcrumbs. <laughs> I did. I did. I learned my lesson last time. Yeah. We still have the blue and yellow serving spoons from last year. So pretty interesting. But if I had any critique, it would be the chunks of apple. I like the apple flavor. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I like the apples themselves. I, I like the apples. Did you pre-cook the apples a little bit? I actually cooked them in the bacon. In the bacon? Yep. I started the bacon, waited till that was almost done, then I put the apples in. Yep. I really love the way the bacon and the apple and the smoked gouda yep. all kind of play it together. It is true. <laughs> I like your choice of pasta too. Big, extra large elbows. Yeah. And that was the largest single bag that I could buy of macaroni-ish pasta. Wow. Do you know what brand? Because John might have to... Shaw's. I really like it. I, I like the bacon. I like the apple. I like that you're trying something new and kind of off the grid. I like the apple and the bacon. A lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yep. look like you hate it and feel guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to be like the Simon Cowell of this thing. But like, but... What's your favorite mac and cheese? Oh, okay. Probably used to be Stouffer's. It's a solid mac. Yeah. He's not wrong. There's no problem in the, in the basis of his good mac set. Yeah, I, but it's I'm... okay. We can have differing opinions. All right. Uh, tell us All right. about Now, this one, this one really interests me because this is yeah. a high concept mac. So, as you know, I'm from Ohio. And yep. by that, I mean uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> Finally, boring chick from Ohio and boring chick from, from Ohio. Ohio. Together, together at last. last. <laughs> so I wanted to bring something with kind of some 
Austin inspiration. And one of the things that is very popular in Austin is Mexican street corn. Yeah. Sweet corn with chili dusted over it, a squeeze of lime, and some mayonnaise. Mm. Um, and so I wanted to translate that into a mac and cheese. Oh, there's also queso fresco on it. So what I did was I put corn in the mac and cheese, which Frankie is pissy about, but <laughs> um, also put in a little green chilies. I used queso fresco, but more as a mix-in and not in the cheese sauce itself. So yeah. there's chunks of queso fresco in there. And then I just used a Monterey Jack uh, cheese sauce, but then I poured in uh, the liquid from a can of chipotle peppers. Ooh. Um, and we also have mayonnaise on the side because I know mayonnaise is kind of a polarizing uh, condiment. So if you would like to get the full street corn experience, this is lime mayonnaise. So you'll get the tang of the lime with the smoothness of the mayonnaise. Now, let me tell you, I am not a fan of mayonnaise in general, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try it because if, if someone presents to me a, a complete dining experience, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with what the chef suggests. So again, I like the pasta. I like some of the concepts here. The corn, I think, is just not going to work. People put <laughs> ketchup in their mac and cheese, and I think mayonnaise is way less gross than that. Yeah, ketchup is disgusting in mac and cheese. Uh -huh. <laughs> So the flavors are nice. Mm. And once again, I think the corn flavor is interesting. I actually really like it. What a freak you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're always making these weird macs that turn out to be good. It's a little spicy, isn't it? It's, 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 Chipotle it's just a little spicy. It's really nice though. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things to like about this. First, I really like the mayonnaise. I think it actually mm -hmm. really finishes it off. The corn, I like. I like it just mm -hmm. outright. I like it more than I think I like the apples in the other one. Mm. This is um, this is very good. This is a high concept idea that paid off big. Yeah, kind of like yeah. boring Chuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think the mayonnaise would be better than dolloping it because I got a little bit too much of a clump of mayonnaise and yeah. it started to become more like a mac salad. I, I do like this it. Is like <laughs> Like, I feel like if you put it in a burrito with a little bit of meat, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so, Frankie, we've got a Mac that is near and dear to your heart next. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I it, this is my, my traditional low-effort Mac. What I did, John, was, was I trolled you all by buying Annie's, a Mac that we typically don't like, uh -huh. and putting a, a, a really dubious topping in it called tuna, because <laughs> we have a lot of fans that want tuna in there. I dropped the screw in the tuna! <laughs> Drop the screw in the tuna! It was me! Shells in Aged Cheddar Annie's Deluxe. Yep. With Star Kiss tuna? Is that what it is? Star Kiss? Star -kiss. Yeah. yeah. Two boxes Sorry, with Charlie. one can. That's the tuna ratio. <laughs> Let me tell you this, though. I, I don't remember exactly what we thought of the, the Real Aged Cheddar Deluxe. Yeah, I don't know. But I tried it right when it came out, and it was really good. <laughs> Again, subtle cheese flavor, but not bad. Not as good as any of the craft offerings. I eat this. And then I put tuna in it, and the whole kitchen smelled like tuna. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not excited. Last year, we were like, I know, we didn't do tuna. Wouldn't it be funny if we did Annie's? So here it is. Let's all laugh. Let's all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and we know tuna. It's your favorite. I don't want no tuna. <laughs> tuna and Annie's is what you want, right? I'm only taking a it's little. It's been sitting for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Three years. <laughs> Got a nice big chunk of tuna. All right. It smells like tuna bad. Oh, it sure does. <laughs> well thought. <laughs> well, Anger you Kirby, hate. you go first. I hate tuna. It's <laughs> super fishy. The tuna is super overwhelming. Did you drain the tuna? Yeah, you, you watched me do it. I did. This Light. is awesome. This so is a tuna, what I thought it was tuna Mac before. should taste a like. A tuna 100%. lover. Yeah, sometimes my cat eats my food, <laughs> and he would give this a 10 out of 10. So next we have a very interesting Mac, and this is from a certain friend of ours from Ohio. And it's not Ash. <laughs> it's not Ash. <Ashley. laughs> it's not this boring chick. <laughs> All she does is sell her book. Uh, how to eat a lobster, now available in Cork <laughs> This is a Cracker Barrel base, okay. sharp cheddar, with... Cincinnati style chili. What is a Cincinnati style chili? I don't know what that is. It uses different spices than your average chili. You serve it typically on top of just spaghetti. Yeah. Or hot dogs and top it with some cheddar cheese. But yep. I figured you got cheddar mac. Sure. Put the chili on top and then I sprinkled a little more cheese on top. Yep. So it's got like some different spices in it like cinnamon, allspice, cinnamon, uh, allspice. ground clove. Some Service up a here. portion. I mostly just taste chili. And that's not to say it's boring. Chuck. <laughs> the chili is actually really good. It goes right over the mac, right? But I think that's part of the point of this style chili, right? It's usually served over a plain pasta. Yeah. I like it a lot better than Frankie's. I, I like it about as much as mine. Really? The chili I'm finding clashes too much with the mac and cheese flavor. But it's still a little parm for it. Yeah. See? See it needs a little, little something. It would work better if the chili layer was a lot thinner. 
and there was more cheese underneath or over it. I think if you put the, <laughs> the beef from this chili into the corn mac and put it in the tortilla, it'd be really good. <laughs> <laughs> He's still focused on the tortilla idea. So what, next. What the f is this? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Tell us what happened okay, here. The big thing, it's the same thing. It's just cold, but so I microwaved a little bit of it for sampling, but that's probably cold too. It's just a basic craft mac and cheese, but in there there's also mushroom soup and a little bit of ricotta and a little bit of vegetables just for a texture. Interesting. I'm a huge fan of using um, cream soups for cooking. I've never heard of it in the Mac though. Do you recommend Parmesan cheese on it? Is that your recommended serving uh, suggestion? I, sure. It's definitely got a different flavor direction than any of the other Macs. To me the cheese is strange and I hit like a pepper or a mushroom at one point and I didn't like it. I like the flavor, the mushroom plus the ricotta. I'm not sure I like it in a macaroni and cheese. I think I would like it more in a in a gravy that you'd put over a piece of chicken. Yeah maybe if you could somehow firm up the texture. Maybe a chicken in this would help a lot. Yeah. I thought that'd be too much. Oh, we were gonna put chicken in, but then we were like, is that too far from the, from the, from the challenge? Um, Frankie, you got some cheese. On your beard. On your yeah. beard. The mustache and beard. Yeah, you, you I need an app. It does kind of taste like Stouffer's esque to me. Uh -huh. It has a little bit of that going for it. Yeah. The glass house of Angry Kirby has been shattered. It was better yesterday. Excuses, excuses. You know, if I have. To, I didn't say that about my tuna mac. It's way better than Frankie's mac. <laughs> I like it a little bit more than even this chili mac, just because it's a great chili, but it's so strong we don't get much of the mac. So, but we still got one more mac to go, right? Oh, uh, I'm here. I wanted something that would be uniquely EJ, so this is a whiskey mac. Uh, a whiskey mac. <laughs> so there's essence of whiskey in there. There's bits of bacon, a little paprika, and cracked pepper with some cabbage cheese. It's a cracker barrel base too. It so. sounds kind of fun. We'll see how it is. I didn't taste it. <laughs> <laughs> it has a good nose. Get, uh, your Mac schnifter out. Your Mac schwinkter. <laughs> yeah, your Mac. that's a different thing. <laughs> it's heavy on the smoke. Yeah, it's very smoky. That might be from the bacon itself, actually. It's applewood smoked mm. bacon. I continue to like the whiskey in your dishes, EJ. What kind of whiskey was it? Bullet bourbon. So it was uh, not the low low end, but it was, yeah. it was a little bit higher. It doesn't have a lot of cheese. Mm. It could have used some more creamy and cheesiness, but I like the bacon and I like the whiskey flavor. I think it's pretty good. You've got to really like that um, smoke. Yes. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. At first I was like, I was like, oh, it tastes like a tree. I wasn't expecting it, but the more I ate, the better it I, I really liked it. That's how whiskey is. <laughs> you, you take a little, you're like, I'm drinking a tree. <laughs> a yeah, tree. Yeah, trees rule. <laughs> I really like the bacon in it. The bacon is, uh, Big piece. Big, 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 big. See, I actually <laughs> preferred the way that Ashley cooked her bacon in that. I've learned of Ashley that she really knows how to cook bacon. Yeah. Yes. It's a truth. You are a pro bacon cooker for use of macaroni and cheese. She should probably write a book. <laughs> <laughs> how to cook bacon for macaroni and cheese. We have a tough decision. Tough to make. decision. There's some good Macs on the table. There are. And then there's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Starting with you. Okay. EJ, let's have a private moment. <laughs> We've sampled all the Macs. I'm going to have to say my favorite of all of them was Ashley's corn Mac. I really liked it. I loved the queso fresco. It was my favorite of the whole thing. So that's my vote. I tried all the macaronis and they were all really bad. So I have to pick one of them. Do I look 10 pounds fatter or skinnier right now? Because you're the cameraman. <laughs> we're going with your macaroni then, because you're going to make me look the best, right? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your macaroni was. I liked your macaroni the best. I also enjoyed yours the most, DJ. It was good. I like crispy bacon and the whiskey taste. Tasted good. I liked it. So, I'm going to say Junt, and it's not because I'm trying to replace Frankie to use Boxmac to just exclusively sell my book. Junt had... Um, the best cheese flavor. I also liked how he was using leftovers because that's good for the environment. Um, and I also am a big fan of chicken in my mac and cheese and I think that the addition of sour cream had a very nice tang. So my vote is for Junt. Please buy my book. It's called How to Eat a Lobster from Quirk Books. My favorite mac out of the bunch was EJ's mac. It was nice and simple, but it had good flavor and I really like the bacon in it. Understood. Everybody's talking about how my tuna mac sucks, but I had to make it with a broken freaking neck. There's some good macs on the table. But Ashley's bacon and apple mac, it surprised me. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Okay, EJ, is there a clear winner? Yes. There's a grand prize. There's only one prize. <laughs> okay. There's no second place. There's what? no third place. What? Everybody would get a prize but me if that was the case. Yes. <laughs> We've got some fireworks Oreos, a package of fireworks Oreos. What makes an Oreo firework a U.S.? It's got pop and candy. It's limited edition, even though it comes out every 4th of July. 
this is the prize? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and in my experience, when it comes to weird artificial flavors, Oreo has it all over Eminem at least. Okay. EJ, you were the man behind the, the voting camera. Yes, and if I didn't have video evidence, <laughs> um, it was my Mac that won. Whoa! And the runner-up was a, a three-way tie between Ashley's Max and John's Max. We've got a new <laughs> champion for the 4th of July Max Fest. Woo! EJ Massa for the Whiskey Tree Max. Does it actually have Pop Rocks in it? Frank is way more interested in the, in the Oreos than anything we've done today. Nothing would make them better is tuna. They do have a little bit of a poppiness to it. It's not crazy. Kids aren't going to hurt their mouths no, on no. this Oreo. It's a little bit of a gimmick, right? I don't think I truly deserve these until I face TV's Gary, a Mac of his choosing. Oh! He's calling you out, Gary. TV's Gary, we haven't found him. He's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. EJ is right here. <laughs> He's right here. Yeah, next up I'm gonna make a bigger tree, Mac. Let me tell you about my client, EJ Massa. He defeated Queso Takaroni. I'm not convinced, actually. I prefer. Oh, yeah, Jason I think I'd probably prefer, prefer <laughs> Jason Tucker. Yeah, anyway, happy Fourth of July. <laughs> happy Fourth of July. <laughs> happy Fourth of July, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Black Bag. The reigning, defending, undisputed WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, EJ Massa. Uh, I'm fed up with this world. <laughs>